Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe. This time we're going to talk about prehistory and we're going to talk about two ways of looking at prehistory. One is the standard uh, timeline of the, um, the Stone Age, the Bronze Age and the Iron Age and the other is a different way of looking at prehistory. So let's look at the uh, the standard or the what used to be the standard way of looking at prehistory. So the old Stone Age, the Paleolithic, uh, was from three and a half million years ago up until 40,000 years ago. Um, it takes in the earliest production of simple stone tools and at this point um, we're talking about Homo habilis and Homo erectus rather than Homo sapiens, so the forerunners of modern humans. Um, and then obviously moving towards the development of modern humans. So 70,000 years ago, people started to handwork flints. And around 40,000 years ago, we get the beginning of cave art. Um, now this presentation mostly focuses on Britain because uh, that's the bit of prehistory that I know the best. Um, obviously these the timing of these ages uh, can vary depending on different, which part of the world we're talking about. Uh, so um, there wasn't much going on in Britain in the old Stone Age. Um, partly because a lot of it was covered by a huge ice sheet and um, the bits that weren't uh, are now underwater. <laughs> so um, Doggerland, for example. So uh, then we have the Middle Stone Age, which lasted from 12,000 before Common Era to the end of the last ice age. And uh, so this is the period when Doggerland would have been inhabited um, so Doggerland is now under the North Sea. So um, this was the period of hunter-gatherers, the dog being first domesticated and the forests starting to spread uh, on the land as the ice sheets receded. Uh, and you have to remember that some of the ice sheets were actually about a kilometre thick. So they left huge gouges and um, rock deposits all over the, the landscape. So you can tell the difference between the stone tools of the Mesolithic and the stone tools of the uh, Old Stone Age because the Mesolithic tended to use these little microlith flints um, and they would typically attach them to a, a wooden shaft or a haft uh, and use them as scrapers or um, pointers and so on. And uh, you actually start to get sedentary dwellings at this point as well. Um, then we have the New Stone Age, which was from, or the Neolithic, from 5,000 to 2,000 before Common Era. And it's at this point that you start getting tombs and stone circles and the knowledge of sowing and reaping crops gets spread across Europe, uh, across the, the belt of the temperate zone um, from the Near East. And we actually have an instance of flint mining um, at Grimes Graves in Norfolk. And if you've ever visited the site, it's absolutely incredible. These, um, the little depressions that you can see in the photograph uh, are the remains of bell pits and a bell pit was where people dug down into the earth and um, they went down into the pit in on ladders and they actually mined out galleries on either side of the bottom of the pit to get at the really good flint that was underground and um, you, if you visit this site you can actually go into one of the bell pits that's been excavated and see the tunnels that they made. And when you think that they made these with basically bone and antler picks, that's an incredible thing. Um, it's mind blowing, to be honest. So check it out if you're ever in the area of Grimes Graves in Norfolk. 
So then we move to the Bronze Age. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the um, these ages vary wildly. Um, so if you look uh, to other countries other than Britain, the dates for the Bronze Age will be completely different. And in some countries, there's also a Copper Age, which is where people were working and smelting copper. And that's called the Chalcolithic. Um, nothing to do with chalk. It's uh, Latin for copper. So um, the nice thing about bronze is that it's harder than copper because it's an alloy of copper and tin. And it may have been brought to Britain by the beaker culture, which arrived around 2200 before Common Era. And the beaker culture uh, may have been a movement of people or it may have been a movement of ideas. We don't actually know. And the thing that was distinctive about the beaker culture was that they produced this uh, type of pottery, um, such as is illustrated here and uh, they were generally buried with it. So um, the other illustration on this slide is a typical Bronze Age axe. And this would have been um, attached to a wooden haft. So yeah, so the Bronze Age lasted from 2000 to 1000 before Common Era in, the, in Britain. Okay, this is a fabulous piece of Bronze Age art that I had put into the presentation. Uh, it's known as the Mould Cape and um, it was made by attaching these various sheets of gold together and then uh, basically moulding them with, with hammers. And the curious thing about this is that whoever wore this would have been very small and once they were wearing it they wouldn't have been able to move their arms because it would have extended quite a long way down their body and then they'd have been like no I can't move um, but it is a fabulously beautiful thing so isn't it lovely oh, I just think it's amazing and I always think it's amazing about gold that when you dig it up out of the ground it's still shiny it's the only metal where that's the case so there you go so coming after the Bronze Age, we, we get to the Iron Age, and this is where we start to get more, more famous artefacts that are reckon, widely recognisable. So um, on the left here, we have the Battersea Shield, which was dug up out of the Thames in Battersea in London, UK. And this wouldn't have been an actual shield used in battle. It was an offering that would have been made and put into the river. Um, but it's got very fine workmanship as you can see and um, it also had enamel bosses on it and and these lovely curly shapes um it's also at this point in time that we get the development of money and uh here's some examples of some money made by the celts uh the discovery of enameling happened around this time and um also very widespread use of gold and torques like this one and they discovered how to smelt iron which was harder than bronze and this is when the Celts or either the culture or the people arrived in Britain and uh, the house that's illustrated here is a Cranog and uh, I think this one's in Scotland but they were also found in Wales and it's basically an artificial island um, or a shallow part of a lake that's been built up with um, wooden supports and then you make a bridge and you put your roundhouse onto your artificial island and it's more of a defensible position so um, a bit cold in winter I ever thought but then Iron Age winters were a bit warmer so um, so there you go Cranach and they're amazing places so uh, if this is the one in Scotland um, I've actually been to it and went to a harp concert there so um, which was a very magical experience so that's the Iron Age okay now for the other way of looking at the division of time in prehistory and I think in many ways this one is 
it's slightly harder to understand, but possibly more useful. And uh, if you read Ronald Hutton's book, um, Pagan Religions of the Ancient British Isles, that book goes into a lot of detail about these, this way of looking at prehistory. And uh, in case you're wondering, the burial mound in this slide is Bryn Cechli, the in, in Anglesey, um, which I w went to in about sometime in the early 2010s um, and took this picture. So lovely place. So starting from this new division, new way of looking at the divisions, we actually have the kinds of, it's about the kinds of art and funerary mon monuments that people were producing. So the first period is the period of cave art. And this lasted from 30,000 before common era to 23,000 before common era. And that's the paleo Paleolithic um, period in Britain. And then from 23,000 before common era to 12,000 BCE, the Ice Age renders Britain uninhabitable. Um, but we did have cave paintings in Europe over this period. Uh, so from 30,000 BCE to 11,000 BCE, there are cave paintings in Europe. And that's around that time when the Lascaux, the very famous paintings in Lascaux cave were produced. Um, between 12,000 and 9,000 BCE, there were some cave paintings in Britain, but they were extremely rare because of the Ice Age. Um, the two known examples are Cresswell Crags in Derbyshire and um, the Ch in Cheddar Gorge cave. And it was around 6,000 BCE that Britain became an island because it was cut off from the mainland by the rising meltwaters um, of the, as the Ice Age came to an end and um, it's not clear whether there was a gradual inundation of the low-lying areas such as Doggerland or whether it was a sudden inundation um, that there may have been it may have been a combination of the two so the next phase was the time of the tombs and uh, this photograph is from my trip to Brittany in 2008. Um, can't remember the name of the burial mound, um, but it was they've got some very spectacular ones around there. So the time of the tombs was from 5000 BCE to 3200 BCE. Um, people were building trapezoid court cairns with multiple burials in them. So examples of that would be the, um, the West Killet Long Barrow and Wayland Smithy. And these would contain multiple burials. So they were like a place where people would go take their, first of all, they would excarnate the, the dead. So they would place them on a platform, a wooden platform, fairly high up in the sky uh, and wait for the birds to come and pick the bits off the, the corpse. And then after the, after the flesh was all gone, they would then take the bones and deposit them in the burial mound. So at some point there was a turning away from the old that style of um, ritual around death and they would put, they actually put blocking stones at the entrance to some of these mounds and you can see that at West Kennet and you can see it at at Wayland Smithy, they've got these great big sarsens at the entrance blocking off the original um, the original sacred space. So at this time, um, houses were made of stone or wood and there was widespread farming and woodland clearance. And towards the end of this period, so uh, presumably after they'd blocked off the, the ritual space at the older style of burial mound, uh, they actually started making round burial mounds. So it seems that there was some kind of shift in religious belief and or practice. So again, um, all of this information is sourced from Ronald Hutton's um, book, Pagan Religions of the Ancient British Isles. Okay. 
So after that, we have the time of the circles. And this lasted from around 3200 to 2200 BCE. And um, the purpose of stone circles may have varied. So some of them may have been based on astrological, uh, astronomical alignments. Um, there is some evidence that there are various stone circles in Scotland that are based on lunar alignments, for example. And there, um, it's well known that Stonehenge um, has the sun, the summer solstice sunrise that lines up with the hailstone. Um, it's possible that stone circle building was brought by the beaker culture I mentioned earlier. So I hope you enjoyed this and um, further reading would be uh, the aforementioned book by Ronald Hutton. Um, I believe, I haven't actually read Pagan Britain, but I believe it's an updated version of Pagan Religions of the Ancient British Isles. And I would also recommend Francis Pryor, um, who is a uh, used to be on time team and um, very interesting chap, uh, very learned, uh, particularly on the subject of farming. So um, hope you enjoyed this and um, do hit the subscribe button, check out my other videos and we'll see you next time. Blessed be.